Well, look, before we go, I'm going to do a quick fire questions. So I'm just going to rattle off some favourites and you can let me know what your favourites are. <laughs> so uh, uh, what was the first fish that you caught? Stickleback. Stickle. Uh, rod and line or was that in the net? Uh, net. Uh, okay. Cage four. First thing on rod and line I caught genuinely, and I've never caught one since, is a frog. <laughs> it took a I can remember. Oh, well, it took a hook. Lake. It took a hook. I oh, was really? At Bowman Lakes in Greater Manchester. I got a little bob float. I got a worm on, uh, on a sort of pin type hook. The float went under. I died with excitement. I struck wildly, and a frog flew <laughs> over my shoulder. I've never caught a frog since. And so that was my first thing yeah. repeated, anyway. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah, you've got, got to work on that one. Um, Favourite fish? Which I guess you get asked all the time, but... Probably roach. Yeah, there's something about... What I don't get, and you might be able to explain this to me, what is this love for roach, but the rud, which is a very superficially similar fish, just doesn't seem to get the same amount of love? I don't know if, if you could... It's a curious one, Jack, isn't it? You're right it's there, because a rud, after all, is a far prettier roach in terms of just no. one drop dead gorgeous. I mean, those vivid scarlet fins, those, those deep go. But the roach is just something so elementally <laughs> English about a roach. Got to be a river roach, I'm sure anybody yeah. you talk to um, says. <laughs> Um, yeah, time's up, John. The what? light's gone out. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to put a shilling in the meter. Yeah, um, you're quite right. I mean, I, I, even people like Alan Blair, the, the the carp god from Nash, he said to me a couple of weeks ago, the only fish that really counts in this country is a two pound river roach, and that's coming from a thirty year old carp god. You know. Yeah. So just something about the roach, which is fundamentally. I think what English fishermen are about. Yeah, I don't. No, I, but, yeah, it's a, it's a funny one because they they just got this cult, haven't they, going for them? Uh, mm. Have you have you got a favourite? I mean, you're probably UK, but have you got a favourite venue? Well, it's it, it's got to be the Wenson in terms of. Are we talking about roach now, or are we talking? Well, are we, well any, any for anything really, any any kind of fishing. <laughs> I guess for I guess the Wenson means so much to me because I fished it. 50 odd years and it, it's in my soul i adore the river y equally um i first fished that when i was 10 and that's a very long time ago so i've seen probably although i love the hampshire aden i love all manner of sort of yorkshire rivers northern rivers um blimey i love them all but, but the <laughs> y the Wentz, the y and the went are difficult ones to be for me they're pretty pretty special aren't they uh, and a favorite yeah. method Well, I like fly fishing. So I love nymph fishing. Okay. And I like dry fly fishing. But I guess it's got to be trotting a stick float. Yeah, I'm with you on that. I do love trotting. And something about trotting. You know, today, I didn't fish today in honour of you. I was looking forward to this. <laughs> and um, it was a beautiful, still, pewter cloud evening. There was no wind, as I've said, it was eight degrees. The river didn't have a ruffle on it whatsoever. And it just looked a trotter's paradise, you know? Um, oh, you, so, should have, yeah. you should have sacked me yeah. off, John. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't do that, my best no. mate. Um, yeah, so it, it, probably, yeah, trotting afloat. Trotting okay. Afloat. And uh, last question, have you got an angling hero? Apart from you. Apart from me, yeah. <laughs> um, Ooh, I think I would go for Fred Buller. Okay. Who was the pike maestro of the middle part of the century, pike and salmon uh, of the last century, I hasten to add, not the century. Um, living. Do you know, I just don't think we're as good as they were. I just don't think modern anglers have the same gravitas. 
I don't know yeah. if that's I don't know if that's a reflection of society. Um, I am really struggling to think of a modern, genuine hero. I mean, I could think about guys like Richard Walker, Fred Taylor, Fred Buller, Arthur Oglesby, Hugh Falkus, characters I got to know late on in my life that were absolute giants. And do you know, if we're looking at the sport today, giants, I just don't know. I mean, I'm incredibly fond of a lot of anglers. I mean, Chris Yates obviously springs to mind. Chris and I were very close in the 80s and 90s. Very, very, very fond of Chris. I think he's had a huge effect. I was very close to John Wilson, who obviously had a massive impact on fishing. Um, but I never remotely hero worshipped John. Um, so it's a difficult question, and I'm glad you answered asked that. And I'm sorry my answer isn't, isn't more cut and dried and... I, I feel I'm a bit disappointing. Um, <laughs> no, well, it was. Uh, I was thinking more about when you were younger as opposed to now. But I mean, it, it's yeah. It's, it's, so, yeah, yeah. Mind you, there's nothing wrong. There's no nothing wrong with getting old and having heroes. Um, no, I think I think there are some admirable anglers out there. I tell you, you know, going back to Crabtree and James, young James Buckley. I mean, he's a kid to watch. I think he's got all the attributes of a great angler. I mean, he loves fishing. He's good at fishing. He understands fish. He's now working as a as a river keeper. Um, he's he, he's got that generosity of spirit. I think I think that harms a lot of anglers that they don't really and truly share their pleasure in fishing. That I think that there, there is that slight meanness in a lot of anglers that lets them down. Um, so James, I think, is one to watch. I mean, James could become a giant certainly. Yeah, I agree with that. And I'll I'll share a story that I, I met up with James when he was living in London. He must have been about 17, I think. And he was showing me uh, the Wandle. So it was a stretch of the River Wandle. Oh, and, yeah, um, yeah. you know, beautiful little chalk stream in London, which is kind of a juxtaposition, I suppose. And um, he was showing me this shoal of barbel and, and chub and all that. And his eyes were on the river. And then these girls around about his age walked by and they were all kind of chatting, looking at James, his handsome young man. And his eyes didn't leave these barbel. <laughs> And I just thought, uh, James, what are you? <laughs> like, you need to get your priorities. Uh, priorities. It might be different now because he's a little bit older. He might have um, forgotten the fish a little bit. But he's a fantastic angler, and he's a lovely young man. So uh, I, I couldn't agree. Yeah, more. one to watch. One to yeah. watch. I think if you're still doing these podcasts in uh, 50 years' time, I think it'll, it could well be that a lot of people you talk to will have James Buckley as a hero. Yeah. Um, well, hopefully. Good yeah, good one you would make. If I'm not six foot under, then I'll be in 50 years' time. I'll definitely be doing it. But yeah, he's a good oh, egg. <laughs> well, look, John, it's been a pleasure to catch up with you.